Hello everyone, welcome to our uh, second session for this week in MLAS 800. And we are going to be working with uh, the Dolly large language model uh, uh, from Databricks. And we're going to um, go ahead and, and uh, jump straight into uh, CoLab, uh, again, another lab. And for us on this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm already here. So if you're on Google, go ahead and search CoLab and then get logged in uh, and then uh, if you're if you type in Google CoLab and then you, you follow the link you can go that way too um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and start from here I'm gonna open up I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you've saved your work um, if you haven't that's okay you can always go back and rewatch what I've got before uh, in the first uh, lab earlier this week um, and uh, they're they're um, they're not tied to each other. So in other words, the first session, um, the, the libraries and everything that we're going to be using uh, in the second session aren't required from the first session. So you can, you can watch them independently is where I'm going. But it is a good idea. You'll get more out of it, of course, if, if you watch them sequentially. Um, you know, go through the Python primer and then, then come on over here. That, that's definitely a good way to go about it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open my notebook, um, which is this one, the Google... All right, Google, CoLab, Python, and LLM intro. And um, this is uh, session one. Um, this was what we went through with session one. We went through um, all of our Python variables, our data types, our control flow operators, and we just kind of ended on that. Okay, so that's a quick primer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a session two lab. Um, so I'm going to create a, oops, I'm going to create a text uh, right here. Uh, we're going to call this uh, session two lab. Um, and this is going to be Dolly working with Dolly LLM. So we're going to create um, uh, a Dolly large language model that's going to be a personal one for us to use. So think of OpenAI, right? What they've built. Well, we're going to create one that's going to be ours, and it's our personal one that we're going to create. It's kind of cool. Um, it's not kind of. It is cool. So I'm going to bold this, and then I'm going to make the text bigger, uh, and then I'm going to come on over here, and I'm going to move this up. And, uh, and I'm going to hide the session one lab. So you you're, you can just hit this arrow to, to hide that. Um, and so this is our Python primer that we just did. Now we're going to jump into session two. Uh, and we're going to be working with LLM. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to create a comment uh, just so people understand. Uh, I'm going to create a comment block that doesn't do anything. It's just kind of a header for for what we're doing which is just hugging face uh hosting of data bricks llm and um so hugging face is a, a company that's real big in the large language model they have a lot of open source um they're a hosting um a, a hosting website hosting service for a lot of large language models. Um, so if you want to get Mistral, or do you want to get Llama, or you want to get um, Dolly, you can, and different versions of each one of those that are specially tuned, there's different versions. You can use Hugging Face. Um, they host a lot of the what's called quantized um, uh, large language models that are out there. Um, so we're reusing Dolly this time. So uh, I, I'm just wanting to put a note out there that we're we're using one that has already been pre-trained. Dolly's already been pre-trained. So we're using we're working with the quantized version of Dolly. We'll be we'll be pulling that model across using Hugging Hugging Face, and we're going to be doing this all online. We're not going to be spinning up a server locally. We're not downloading anything to our local machine. So there's pros and cons to it, but this is going to make life a lot easier for us. So I'm going to create a string literal here um, just so people are familiar um, and it may have popped up here uh, yeah so so there's we're gonna be using hugging face uh, dot co uh, um, and we're gonna be I'm gonna go through this uh, and I'm gonna make some changes to this so it's hugging face dot co um, but we're gonna be using databricks um, there is a, uh, we're going to be using a smaller version of it. So .co uh, data bricks, and this is a string literal. So this code, this is just reference for us. This is code that's not going to do anything. 
Um, and we're going to be using the 3B. There's a 7B, Dolly V2 7B, which means that it's a Dolly large language model with seven uh, parameterized with seven billion parameters. We're actually going to be using one that's uh, a little smaller with three billion parameters for 3B. Um, so we're saying hugging face.co databricks Dolly dash V2 dash 3B. So we're just going to run this just to make sure our code code line is looking good. Um, this is going to run and should give us no issues. This is kind of, yeah, we, we're, we're good here. The, the, again, this is, this is not actual code. This is just a, a, a comment for us to, to let us know that this is what we're working with. Um, so we're going to create another code, se uh, another code uh, uh, section. And this one's going to actually do some work. We're going to actually do some, um, we're, we're going to be doing some, uh, actually some shell. So we're going to uh, perform a pip, uh, we're going to perform a pip install, perform pip install, uh, and pull in transformer. And then um, the transformer is, um, it, it, this is, um, we're going to pull in a, a torch. We're going to be pulling a lot of different things. So um, this is going to do an install um, and get, get, get us get the environment prepped for us so we're actually jumping out to a command shell we'll be using a uh, I'll show you what this does but we're within this Jupyter notebook environment we're working in what's called an integrated development environment and um, and we do need to shell out to the virtual machine that we are sp there's a virtual machine that we're working on on the back end and we're gonna shell out to that from within here we're going to command shell from within Jupyter notebooks and run a command an operating system command to install the transformer um, and it's going to install quite a few other libraries too, uh, dependencies and things like that for us so that we can work with this uh, with Dolly okay so um, I'm gonna put a note here to uh, note uh, depending uh, depending on your connection speed uh, this could take a while. I, and I just throw that out there because this is something that when I've done it, it's taken a while. Um, so uh, let's do the pip install. Um, I'm going to make sure uh, we're going to say pip install and then um, install. Ooh, nope, I don't want to do all that. Uh, I'm gonna, I've got a very specific thing I want to, uh, and it's going to be accelerate, excel. I just want to make sure I've got the A C C E L E R A T E. Yep. Uh, spelling is never my strong suit. And we're going to be pulling in um, zero. Um, it's got one five, but we're going to be using uh, point one six point zero, comma, uh, and then we're going to be. It, it, there's uh, some stuff that. Um, this is the library that we're pulling in the acceleration library, but here's the transformer. We're going to be pulling in the transformer transformers uh, And we're going to be pulling in torch and then uh, we'll be doing an equal sign um, And we're going to be using we're actually going to be using almost everything here um, With the exception that we're going to say dot one um, and that is, that is, uh, yep, that all looks good. But data set is going to be different. We're actually going to be using what's called the torch, um, oh, torch, uh, torch library as part of this. And so that is correct. We are going to be using that, but we won't be using this data set. So that, that should take care of us, um, for our pip install. So we're doing a pip install. We're pulling in the accelerate. We're pulling in the transformer, and we're pulling in torch, uh, and we're pulling in 1.13.1, uh, 4.28.1 for the transformer, and 0.16.0 uh, for the accelerate. And I think for us, I think we're good to go. I think that's all we need. Let's see how much trouble we can get into. I'm going to go ahead and push play on that. Um, so when you do this for the first time, um, it's going to run. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to download the accelerate. It's going to download the transformer. Um, my connection's a little slow, so it's going to move along here. Um, and uh, um, as this is moving, I'll talk a little bit about what it's doing. 
Um, so we're, we're, of course, you can see that we're going through and um, installing NumPy, which is a, um, a Python package, very common Python package. But there's other things, too. There's PyYAML. There's the Hugging Face Hub. Um, there's the Tensor. There's FileLock. There's Regex. There's Request, Tokenizers. Um, there's a lot of different things that are getting installed to get our environment prepped, um, our Python environment prepped with the right proper library so that we can work with the large language model. So we, and so there's some other things that are kind of fun that are coming in here too. The NVIDIA, NVIDIA CUDA, um, CUDA uh, runtime environment, which of course is, that's, uh, um, that gives us our GPU compute. Um, but then we have the NVIDIA CUDNN, which is our deconvolutional neural net. Um, and then you've got some other stuff in here that's getting um, CubeLAS and, and then CUDA NVR uh, TC. Um, then setup tools, you got a wheel. Um, these are all kind of your, um, th th these have already been set up here. It says requirement already satisfied, so those are all good. Um, UR Live, that's for getting connection. That, that gives you an ability to work with URLs um, from within Python. There's some nice libraries there for that. Um, and uh, it, depending on what your installation does, I, I've noticed that sometimes um, it, it, it'll work no matter what, but as it gets towards the end, um, uh, it's going it, to, it'll give this error. Um, I don't, I haven't always seen this. Um, but you know, when you're done is when this is done processing up here. So this code block, um, the, the, the shelling, uh, the percent pip install, when we shelled out, um, to a command shell to run this and install all these libraries on our, on our, our, our virtual machine that we're running with right here. Um, sometimes this errors out, uh, I, I think maybe most people will, um, uh, but anyway, it's okay is where I'm going. So as long as you get down through this and it says successfully installed Accelerate and NVIDIA Cube LAS and NVIDIA CUDA and all this, then you're in good shape. Um, okay, so now that you've got that, um, we're gonna create a new text. Uh, I'm sorry, not a text, uh, delete that. I'm gonna delete this. We're gonna create another code, uh, another line of code. So now um, what we're gonna do is we're going to import um, some Python libraries specifically. Oops, nope, I don't want to do that. Uh, we're going to code. There we go. So let's just start coding. So we're going to uh, Python libraries. And then we're going to say import torch. That's exactly right. Nope, that's not right. Import torch. Yeah, sometimes the AI gets a little, little much for us and it's going to be from transformers import pipeline that is correct we do want that so we'll just say tab that gives us everything we need import torch from transformers import pipeline and that's perfect um and then what we're going to do is read uh dolly llm into generate oops into i'm going to say variable into variable variable um generate text okay um and then <laughs> it's already it's pretty it's pretty quick uh so i'm just double checking uh that's pretty good i think i think that's right so generate underscore text equal to pipeline uh almost it's almost correct um so not too bad um and so uh yeah, and, and here's the thing. We can set the mode, the modality here, um, but I want to just be careful about um, uh, what we're... I, I want to keep this kind of very strict. So um, we're going to uh, go ahead and make a change here because that's pretty close to what I need. Um, oh, geez. Uh, here we go. Pretty close to what I need. Uh, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so the pipeline, uh, pipeline that we're going to do is uh, model equal to, that is true. We are going to do model equal to Databricks Dolly V2 3B. So we're using the three, uh, uh, the, the Dolly uh, LLM that is 3 billion parameters. So that's all good. 
and then we are going to use a uh, torch D type um, that is going to be uh, torch underscore D type equal to torch dot B float 16 comma trust remote code equal true and that is correct and then I want a device oops nope 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 and then I want a device map equal to auto yeah that looks about right I think that's what we need so generate text equal to pipeline model equal Databricks Dolly uh, v23b torch D type equal to torch B float 16 comma trust remote code equal true and device underscore map equal auto I think we're good so that's all we need here we're gonna run this and let's see if we uh, get a clean run on this uh, that's my hope so we're gonna import torch uh, looks good that came in good uh, from transformers we're gonna import the pipeline and then we're gonna read the dolly LLM and it looks like that worked exactly what we need because this generate text that's exactly where we're we're, we're taking the databricks the quantized version of the databricks dolly v2 3b that's the model that we're going after you can actually replace that with different models you can go and and that's something we can check on uh down the road but right now it's uh pulling in um uh, pytorch model dot bin and um, we're getting that downloaded and that is 5.68 gigs um, and then and, and again this is nothing's getting downloaded to your machine um, but just depending on your your um, back and forth between you and the internet um, I imagine everyone's here is going to be the same because this is all cloud compute everything we're doing here um, and uh, so then we're going to uh, we're, ru we're running all of this pipeline into this generate text. So that's what's going on right now. All right. So as we get close to that being done. All right. And then we when we get a clean run here, we'll we'll get um, this will turn into a uh, it should stop spinning. So we'll let that go for a minute. All right, looks like it's moved on. Um, so after the PyTorch model bin, the tokenizer config JSON, uh, tokenizer.json, um, all pretty small. And then the special tokens map um, creates a, a special tokens vocabulary. Um, and uh, looks like we have everything that we need. Um, okay. I don't think there's, I think this is all pretty straightforward. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a hard, we're going to hard code a, a variable test. We're going to actually, we're ready to go. It's spun up. So I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to come in and we're going to, uh, we're going to create a variable called res. Um, and then uh, off of that generate text. So I'm going to pull this generate text down. Generate text. And then I'm going to just do something that says explain. I'm going to pass. I'm going to hard code because I want to test to make sure this works. I'm going to say uh, explain uh, the difference between uh, between um, nuclear fission and fusion. Yeah. And that, that's the prompt that we're going to pass in. So that, that's, that's our prompt. Um, and then I'm going to print the output. Print res uh, generated text. Jeez, that's so nice to have that. So print print res zero uh, generated text. Generated text. Yes, that looks right. Um, so we should be good to go. So what we're doing is this this generate underscore text. That is not that is our large language model. That is our personal. Um, and you can see our RAM usage here um, is is gone up. Uh, so we're, we're down kind of low in the two gig range. We're now running at the eight gig range. We've loaded this up in the memory, um, not so much on the disk space. Um, so we're still good there. Um, so we can we can close that. 
Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and run this and, and see if we get a response back from our large language model. Um, so I'm going to run this. And hopefully, if we did everything right, we should get a response back from our Dolly LLM that we have spun up. Okay, um, it's still thinking about it. Okay, so I'm having uh, a problem because I've been, <laughs> I've been spinning up a lot of these. Um, so I'm actually maxed out on my system RAM. So I have to uh, try something out here. So I've got um, an error. What's happening is I, I can generate my... Uh, I, I've been goofing around, and I'm, uh, but I, I'm, I'm out of uh, system RAM. So I, I've maxed myself out. Um, so I'm going to have to pause this, all right, and then I'm going to try something new here. We'll do this real time. I, I have no idea if this is going to work, um, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to change my runtime type and, uh, from a CPU, I don't know, we'll just say okay and see what happens. We'll save, and this is going to, uh, too many sessions, manage my sessions, um, I'm going to delete that one. Yep, and then close, and then that should free up my space. Uh, and then I'm I'm gonna have to rerun this. So let me rerun this, and then I'm gonna get us back to here. I do not believe anyone else is gonna have this problem because if you spin it up for the first time, you'll be okay. So I'm starting off from the beginning. So I, I've, I've killed my runtime environment, and I've restarted it. So this is kind of good for me to know because I've, I've never, um, I, I haven't encountered this with this, but I'm kind of managing this a little bit. But now I'm on a, um, a different um, transactional processing unit. Uh, and then I'm, I'm, I've switched over. I'm going to rerun this. Again, you won't have to rerun that, so you can sit back, watch, see what ends up happening here. Um, I'm just going, basically what I did was I killed my runtime environment. I changed the, changed the runtime type, and then I'm starting my session over again from, the f from fresh. So I'm just going to, um, when you do that, you, you kill the whole environment, and then you're, you're doing a clean install, essentially. So I'm just going through, starting from the beginning. All my code's still good. Everything, there's no, no change to codes. Um, everything should still be fine in that regard, so we'll let that run. Okay, so far so good. We've got a new clean run, just like before, uh, no different. Uh, my system RAM looks a lot better than it was before over here on the right, so I'm kind of, uh, it, it, being working in a cloud environment gives us a uh, new meaning to, to kind of keeping track of, of our compute engine. Um, so I'm going to rerun this uh, Python libraries piece here. Um, let me see if I can get ourselves some extra room. Uh, there we go. And then I'll run this piece. All right, that's moving along nicely, starting to look good. This all looks the same. All right, looks like that's done. And I think I'm ready to get back to this original code here for our our response variable that we've created with the generate text. Um, and, uh, and I think I know what was going on before. Um, as I, I had two environments. Um, that I had spun up. I had to delete that one environment, so I was using too much system RAM up, so I think that's what was going on. And it wasn't releasing the other environment with a, um, uh, for a test, uh, test set that I was working with. So um, let's get moving on this. Uh, we'll run this and see if that actually gives us a response here at this point, um, which we should get something back, I hope. Uh, explain the difference between nuclear fission and fusion. So now um, it looks like it's moving along pretty good. There we go. All right. Now we're, we're cooking with grease here. So that's correct. That looks good. Um, we actually have our very own large language model that is working now. Um, that's awesome. So we can pat ourselves on the back and we, we can call this a, a success now because we actually got this working. Um, so this is cool, uh, but we actually want to do something more. I want to show you a neat feature. I, I usually code, of course, I, I code things out manually, 
but with the advent of of these large language models especially ones that are coding focused there is large language models that have a um, a code focus that will help you build code more quickly um, it's pretty slick um, so I'm gonna create a code section here and I want to show this off because I started to build this out um, usually it's a, a, a from iPod it's a it's a display um, it's a Python library for um, um, display and, and then doing interactive prompts so you can actually build calculators and stuff like that so usually you build a def which is a def a, a function um, that you you wrap in um, a prompt and then you can have you know, you can do it for math like enter enter variable a enter variable b and then you know calculate a and b and then do you know uh, things like little simple calculators so it's very good for that so in the past, you'd have to build that stuff out all by hand. But with there's this neat little generate with AI. You can start coding, or you can. You've noticed that there's been this ability of the collab uh, to uh, uh, be very intelligent in its ability to generate code for us. So let's go ahead and explore that in more detail. So instead of me generating the code out manually, which is what I usually do. Um, I'm, we'll use the AI to help us with it. So to do that, you hit the generate, and then um, what we're going to do is uh, um, the, what we're going to do is you 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 basically use a natural language. So there is a res variable, a response variable we've already created. So what we can do is we can say using res, and you still have to know some coding for this to work because you still need to know kind of what you're looking at, but it does make life a lot easier using the res variable creating an interactive jupyter notebook prompt so what we're we're asking it is like hey using the res variable from earlier create an interactive jupyter notebook prompt that's what we're we're just asking it to do and so we'll we'll say enter and then what it's going to do is it's going to think about what it needs to do. It's going to go get that. And then uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what this does. This might be a little bit more than what we bargained for. It put an on button click, put a few things. Let's just see what this does. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I've got some code ready to go in case this doesn't work. Um, but let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Uh, and we've already got an error here. This text widget thing isn't quite what I'm looking for. So it's not quite exactly what we're, we're needing. I'm going to have, I'm going to try this again, um, and see if we can't do this differently. Um, using the res, using the res variable, um, create an interactive Jupyter notebook prompt. Maybe that's what I, let's see if that. Let's see if it, if it does a little bit better this time. Uh, from iPod, this, uh, IPython display, import display, text res, generated text, display text. We could try that. That's pretty straightforward. That's not very interactive, though. Um, I want a prompt. So um, we're going to build on this. So it's getting closer, though. So from IPython display, import display, uh, I, I need a couple other things. Um, clear output and then uh and then import time uh, because there's a a, a function that i want to add into this so it, it it doesn't always work sometimes it's awesome sometimes it's not so good like what happened here we're kind of goofing around with it um, but it gives you an ability to kind of build some code out that you can use um we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to take over because it's not always the best um so what we'll do is we're going to create a def uh, interactive uh, prompt for the res and I hope that as we do this it starts to build out yeah so that's uh, not too bad we can pull that in um, while true um, so that's right true I want a clear output oh, that's that's exactly what that's right that's actually what I want so clear uh, output weight equal true display uh, display res 
I don't want to display res. Uh, not there yet. But then clear output we equal true. Then we're going to do prompt equal to uh, input. Uh, and then I'm going to say enter uh, a prompt. Like that. And then we'll do an if, yep, if prompt. Um, uh, if prompt dot lower, um, nope, not over, lower, if prompt dot lower, um, equal, equal exit, uh, break, that's fine. Uh, res, uh, generate text prompt, max length 100. Let's put, yeah, we'll put a max on that. Max, uh, length, uh, equal 100. And then um, display res. Now we do need the display res down here after this. Display, oh, display res, uh, zero generated text. Yep. And then time sleep. We don't need to print. Um, and then we don't need the prompt here. We can remove that because we've got that from earlier. Okay, display the text. Um, and then we have to bring this back as an interactive pr interactive prompt. We have to bring the func we have to call the function. So uh, interactive prompt res that's correct. So not too bad. We had to do a little bit of uh, it, it, we we didn't get a lot out of using that AI. So we tried it. It didn't didn't work in this case, but um, it it has worked for me in the past pretty well. Um, but it did save me a little bit of time as we were building it out. It made this my life a lot easier because this went so much quicker. Um, so now let me go ahead and run this and see if there's any errors that popped. Okay, so this is cool. I got a prompt now. Um, and so I'm going to say, uh, what are the, what, what, let's just keep it some, what is the difference between an orange and an apple? Oh, perfect. Yeah, it worked. Oh, that worked good. Okay. That did what we need. Uh, and then it's keeping it interactive within the, within here. So an orange is a round fruit, whereas an apple is an oval fruit. Well, that's not a lot, but okay, that worked. But, but, but it worked. It gave us, so now we can, now we can test it out. Like, uh, what is two plus two? Let's see. Right. And if it's smart, it should, I mean, these are simple, basic questions. Um, uh, uh well yeah there we go we're usually referring to the operation of addition when we subtract two things we usually refer it. yep it, and when we multiply two things together we usually okay so it's given us a little bit more than we asked for so what is two plus two two plus two in math uh is eight two plus two is four because two so for it's kind of it's kind of given us some interesting output here uh i don't have to see how it got that it's not always it's not always the smartest um these large language models can be wrong as we can see here that it's not quite it's um let's see what is two plus two what if i said what is two uh two plus two like this and we're just playing around. I mean, uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, that worked. So apparently when we added the plus sign, it kind of got it confused. But it did get it right when it's equal to 4. This is the answer. So that did it right. Okay. Um, and uh, that looks like it's working. So I think we got it. Um, now, I'm gonna. this is a good uh, time for us to recap where we're at um, for our uh, our lecture. Or I should say our lecture lab series on autonomous systems so we we are running an autonomous system right now so um it, we went through our python primer um in our second lab here uh we finally got the uh working uh the the llm up working um and so i, I it was the issues on my end that you probably will not um uh encounter on your end because i had multiple environments running 
So uh, we did a pip install. We got uh, the transformer. We built in, um, you know, pulled in Torch and the acceleration packages that we need, which pulled in all these other la uh, these other uh, runtime libraries we needed. Um, then we imported the, por the the Torch library, and then we created a pipeline um, that got us um, uh, uh, an, a, a function that allowed us to access the Dolly large language model. We pulled that into our runtime environment. And, and that's this Databricks Dolly V23B. Um, we brought that in to generate text, and then um, we created a response variable, tested it out, we hard coded it. But then now we've actually got an autonomous, we, we've got a running, you see how down here um, this is still running? It, we're running a service right now that's interacting with our Dolly large language model that will just run. So we've got an autonomous system working right now we, it, and it will continue um uh how do you feel right you can you can sit here and have all kinds of fun questions with this thing you know and just and then um you can see here uh relieve the and are sure that everything would be fine now i was a bit worried about my visa it's so it's now making some stuff up here this is interesting um but you can you can kind of have some fun with this another thing is that this is interactive now so this is a back and forth it's running online it's running interactively and until i hit this stop button it's going to keep running so that large language model and the interaction between us and this is a is a second order cybernetic machine and so essentially and that what i'm saying is it's a human in the loop not only is a human in the loop in the sense that we cr we we spun up and develop this, but we also uh, are continuing to have interactions with the large language model that is running autonomously, by the way. Uh, it, this is kind of just fun for uh, for uh, you if you want to play around with this a little bit longer, uh, and then then we'll call it a day for this uh, this week's activities. But you can you, you can actually interface the Databricks. The sev remember, there's a 7B. So there's a, a one that is seven billion parameters, quite a bit. You know that's that's double, more than double what we're working with here in the parameterization of the large language model. Um, we've got a three billion parameterized large language model that we're working with right now. You can rerun this in your environment and spin up the seven B. Just switch that to seven, and and you can do some testing. You can have some conversations with it. I. Uh, um, will probably um, you you will probably see quickly that there is a big difference between 3b, 7b, and then there's bigger ones. There's there's uh, uh, 13 billion parameters. Um, there's 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 even ones bigger than that 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 companies are working with. Um, but these are great for us because they're still pretty sharp. You can do a lot with 3 billion parameters. 7 billion parameters gets even better, of course. Um, but I encourage you to go ahead and play around with it. Go ahead and test it. Go ahead and you've got a framework now to play with a large, your very own large language model. Um, and we really didn't, I mean, in, um, what's this, five cells, and, and, and we're still running it interactively. Um, we created a, we, we spun our very own, spun up our very own large language model. Okay, um, I am done for this week. If you have any questions, of course, uh, reach out, contact me, but that's all I have. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session. Um, we're going to be, um, of course, doing more of this, working more with different large language models, and, um, and, and that'll be a big part of um, our autonomous systems focus um, as we move now remember as you go through that we're going to start to now that we've got this up and running we'll be getting into like what is prompt engineering how do you prompt an autonomous system and in this case it's prompting a large language model um and so that'll be uh kind of next up as we start to move through this we'll we'll get into those next steps um and what does prompt engineering look like and um it's actually a lot more complicated um than, than one would think um so with that said, that's all I've got. I appreciate it, and we will see you in next week's learning activities.